Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the Home Secretary Priti Patel's latest statement showing intent to break international maritime law as well as scupper cooperation with France on illegal migration. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Priti Patel has been following on from Nigel Farage's racist and false comments again this week. So after Nigel Farage recently, I think it was last week, claimed to be able to, unable to book a hotel room, he said, because all the rooms in this hotel were occupied with illegal immigrants. When in actual fact, of course, none of them were. So then he decided this week to dabble in his favourite hobby of shouting at the English Channel. Now, Nigel Farage, this is the man who, let us remember, says that Britain is so powerful that we can strike superior trade deals all over the world, completely on our own, with the biggest, most powerful economies on earth, completely on our own. We are so influential that being one of the big three members of the wealthiest and most powerful trading and political bloc in the world was actually dragging us down. The EU were holding us back, for goodness sake. This man, this man saw a rubber dinghy with a few people on board on the south coast wearing shorts and t-shirts and shat himself. Oh no, he cried. They've spotted our weakness. A group of men in a dinghy. It's the one thing this great island nation can't defend itself from. And whenever I have to talk about this sort of silliness, and I try to do so very sparingly, I do always have to point out that if Nigel Farage knows about it, I'm pretty sure the UK border force has cottoned on as well. But one unelected gobshout shouting at the sea with a face looking rather like a confused frog is one thing. What we have now is the Home Secretary, so one of the highest officers in, of state, calling for the Royal Navy military organisation to involve itself in such a matter. Now, you know, because obviously what we need is an armed flotilla to tackle rubber dinghies. It's our great weakness, you know, the kryptonite to our superman of a nation. So Patel's so-called plan, if we can call it that, is for the Navy, who, remember, are too small and poorly resourced these days even to protect our shipping overseas, as the Iran crisis last year highlighted. She wants to divert what little resources we have to intercept in these bright yellow rubber dinghies that, remember, the Border Patrol managed to find because Nigel Farage knows about them and in her words send them back. Now I'm not sure that having some poor naval officer lean over the HMS Triumph and shout in a series of languages to turn back is really going to do the trick especially as despite Patel's assertions this would be against maritime law. But Pretty Patel has no respect for even British law, so I'm not sure why I should expect that she cares a jot about international law either. And of course, Patel's reaction to this, that, I mean, this isn't a plan, obviously. It's ridiculous uh, to anyone, even the people who think that there's some great crisis with illegal immigration. This is not a plan. Um, her motivation for saying it is no different to that of Nigel Farage. Just like Nigel Farage, she knows she doesn't have the power to make good on this. In fact, it was quite funny when she, well, so funny in a tragic sort of way, when it was announced in the papers that this was her plan, Nigel Farage's response to this is, well, we'll wait to see if you actually follow through on it. Because again, he, he occupies a niche in politics where he gets to say, as much as I do, I suppose, in many ways, he gets to say what he would do were he in power, but he's not in power. So... He then gets to say, well, I would do this. And then when something goes wrong in the future, well, if you'd have done what I'd have said, even though any expert will say, well, actually wouldn't have done anything. In fact, it might have actually done harm. Uh, he can say, well, actually, no, it would have solved the trick, but you didn't do it. Um, he knows the government aren't going to do this because it's ridiculous. You'd have to be a moron to actually expect the Royal Navy to go shouting at rubber dinghies, turn around. Or what? Or what? Are you going to torpedo them? For goodness sake. But she is also saying it in a sort of way because she also doesn't have the power to do this. Yes, she's a very, very senior government minister, but she's the Home Secretary. 
She's in charge of our police force, albeit a massively reduced one after the 21,000 cuts to police numbers and the hundreds of police stations that were mothballed. As a result of her government, she has no authority over any member of the Royal Navy, thank goodness. But because she is a senior government minister and has influence in cabinet, including over, you know, the defence secretary, the government could order the Navy to divert resources away from protecting British ships and against pirates and unfriendly foreign forces and towards bullying people, fleeing wars and tyrannical oppression. The consequence of this is you potentially cause an international diplomatic row. Because Britain is supposed to be working with France to cooperate in tackling human trafficking, for example. Uh, we just signed an agreement very recently. And that involves working together in partnership in order to monitor and intervene in what may be unlawful migration. That isn't going to be helped by having a pop at France and threatening to sail into their waters with a military vessel. How would these same people feel if the French Navy threatened to send military naval ships into British waters to dump a load of illegal migrants? How would they feel about that? And yet that is exactly what she is suggesting that we do to France. Rank hypocrisy, apart from anything else, apart from the, the lunacy. And let's be clear about what we're talking about here. These people travelling to this country, you call them uh, illegal migrants. Well, to a certain extent they are. But what we're talking about is asylum seekers fleeing for their lives. Don't turn these people back. Only the basest of creatures would even argue for that. They need to be assessed lawfully and with dignity, no matter what the confused frog thinks. I mean, let's face facts. Nigel Farage is a man who campaigned for 20 years for the British people to sack him. I'm not really sure he's the sort of person that people should be listening to. I don't know about you. Now, if the asylum is found to be baseless, of course, fine, return them. They don't have lawful right to stay in the country. That's fine. Just make sure you've made the correct decision, not a political decision, because the bulk of British people do not want the government putting blood on our hands. But people entering the country through covert means are not always asylum seekers, even though a great many of them are. And, and the fact that there's a rise in them recently, again, shouldn't be a surprise. In case people hadn't noticed, there's an awful lot of war-torn crap going on south of us. Some people, however, passing illegal into the country are being trafficked. Those are victims too. And if someone has been forced into slavery of any kind, what you absolutely don't do when spotting them is to shout down to the boat and ask the slaver if they wouldn't mind diverting a little bit. No, they need arresting and the victims taken care of. That is what a compassionate society does. To do as Pretty Patel is suggesting is to turn a blind eye to slavery. Now, I don't think that's a very good look for a former slaver nation, if you ask me. We should actually be stepping up and doing more to tackle the issue internationally, not giving the industry a helping hand. Fortunately, Patel's remarks do not represent official government policy and is just racist dog whistling to shore up her support amongst the scum of the earth. But the Home Affairs Select Committee, which is the group of MPs who oversee Home Affairs and indeed Pretty Patel, are investigating the issue with a focus on the cr criminal element of crossings. So it will look at government efforts to allow for easier asylum channels to be opened up because that's what ultimately you need. Um, the reason why many of these crossings are illegal is not because the people making them are up to no good. It's because there aren't legal and safe means for them to seek asylum. So if genuine asylum seekers have safe legal means of fleeing persecution and war, then you massively cut down on the number of criminal gangs who can operate in this way. But it will also be looking at government failures. For example, what's happening to unaccompanied children? Because we're not really, if we're going to be honest as a nation, impressed with the way Donald Trump decides to deal with this. And we don't really want the UK government following suit in the way it has been either. But still, government ministers should know better than to engage in this sort of stuff. First of all, it pisses off the French at a time when we need their cooperation, not demanding things of them. Because do you know what? That 
in our weakened position because of Brexit ain't going to work on anyone. It's certainly not going to work on the French. They're not really people who are known for being bullied. And especially at a time, like I said, when we have just surrendered so much power to the French. The French have an enormous amount of power now. You know, we're coming up to a position where Boris Johnson is going to have to agree something with the EU. Now, if France considers that it has prepared for Brexit properly, they may take the view, actually, if you're going to piss us off, I think we'll... We're, we're sort of OK with agreeing this thing that you want, but we might just say no anyway, just to see you squirm. I don't think that's a good diplomatic move from the Home Secretary, if I'm going to be honest. Or maybe it's because she doesn't, you know, want effective border control. It's quite good having border chaos because it makes for easy headlines in the racist sections of the right wing press, like the Daily Mail and the Express. And a useful little distraction when our government are turning our country into the oppressive hellhole that many of these poor sods are fleeing from. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.